The following podcast is a Sempronto Media production. Hey guys, welcome to today's episode. And today we have Jen Williamson from the Unshakable Family. And our title is How Fasting Improves the Whole Family. So welcome, Jen. Hi, thanks so much for having me. All right. So tell us a little bit about how fasting has really helped your family. And does everyone in your family do it now? Or is it just you? So great question. So both my husband and I fast regularly and my children, I have 21 year old twins and they do sometimes. So, um, so for example, my son had some skin issues and when he had the skin issues, he was fasting because it was incredible how much his skin healed almost instantly because his body was not using the energy to digest food. It was all for healing. So he does it if he has like a skin flare up. My daughter does it a couple of times a a week. I do it uh, five days a week. And my husband, he's, he's very structured and regular with it. So let's talk about a day in the life of Jen and a day in the life of Willie too. So your husband. So what does your day look like? And and I want to talk about it if you are maintaining your weight and if you are wanting to lose weight. Because obviously, okay. like for me, I have, if I'm trying to maintain, I'm in one kind of regimen. If I'm trying to lose weight, I'm tightening things up. So let's first start with, let's say you gained a few pounds during COVID-19. Now you need to really tighten things up. Yeah. So a lot of people have actually been in that situation and I was in that situation. I put on an extra five and what we, what literally where you want to be and where you are, the only things standing in the way are your habits. Your habits are the bridge from where you are and where you want to be really in all aspects of life. But really like, so for example, I got into a chip habit. I put on five extra pounds. Well, I get to look, what are my habits? I was in my eating window, but I added in, I I really love chips a little too much, but I added that in. So then I switched it out for pumpkin seeds, which are such an incredible food hack and boom, the five pounds came off. So it's really dialing it in and making fasting easy, whether it's like, how can you make the habit of fasting easy? And how can you switch out maybe a habit that's not serving you for one that will really be in alignment with the weight, you know, or what your goal is. Okay. So that, so as far as let's just take an exact day. So what time do you start eating and what time do you stop? And what are you eating in that window uh, if you're trying to lose weight? Okay. So great question. So if I am in a weight loss mode, I switch to a four hour window. I normally have a six to seven hour window. I'm fortunate that I'm at my, my, really my ideal weight. I mean, obviously there are some areas that I could tone up more with exercise, but I'm at my ideal weight. If I go over it, then I'll bring in the four hour eating window and, and it just comes off very easily. But, um, so right now I break my fast usually 12 or one, um, on the weekends, If I want to go out for breakfast, I'm going to go out for breakfast. It's during the week where I'm very disciplined with staying, you know, I'm in the habit. So I don't even have to think about it. And that's what's really key, Chantel. When people are implementing new habits, at first it actually takes willpower. But once something becomes a habit, and I have ways to hack that, and I'm happy to share that, once it becomes a habit... You don't even have to think about it. Like your subconscious mind, I never think, oh, it's 10, I want to eat. It Like subconsciously, you're just kind of on autopilot. And the beauty of it is then you save your willpower. So we have limited amounts of willpower. So the more things that we can put on autopilot and not think about it, the easier it's going to be because then we save our willpower. So my willpower gets saved for chips. You know, that's just, I love chips and french fries. So I save my willpower for that. Everything that I can automate and just make, so I don't even have to think about it and make it a habit is um, just makes my life easy. Plus I don't even have to think about it. I like, 
I have um, an amazing blend that I meal prep. So I have small mason jars. So when it's 12 o'clock or one o'clock, depending on what I'm doing um, in my work day, I make a, I take a mason jar. I add frozen organic berries. I, I add in greens. I actually own my own greens. I have hydroponic grow towers. I add like a salad in there along with um, like one scoop of an organic protein powder with, cause I've meal prepped. I've made it easy. Hemp seeds, chia seeds, maca powder, turmeric, dump it in literally in 30 seconds. It's made. I hit the easy button. And it's my habit. So let's start from even before that, because I do want to talk to you about the coffee. I know you drink coffee in the morning. I know that you love that habit of waking up in the morning, kind of snuggling up um, and having a nice hot cup of coffee. And one of the questions that people say to me all the time is, I'm really doing well with fasting, but I have to have cream in my coffee in Mm. order like I just can't do black coffee. I've tried it. It's disgusting. Yeah. And I know that both me and you, it's funny, we both used to have cream in our coffee. We both have switched to black coffee. And I will tell you one thing I do is I have, so I used to, I took coffee completely out of my diet. And then I just had green tea with hibiscus combination, which I love. But in the morning now, I might have, I've kind of added this in, is a a half a cup to three quarters of a cup of black coffee. But then in the afternoon, after I've finished my lunch, I actually do add some cream in my coffee. Sometimes it's non-dairy, sometimes it's dairy, a little bit of dairy in there. But it's the best meal finisher for me because one of the things I love to do, I have a I, I have a really easy time waiting and to start my meal, but finishing my meal is a problem. And so I have found there's something magical about a cup of coffee with cream that literally puts a lid on me to finish. So I want you to talk about both of those. One, how did you transition from having no cream in your coffee and what had to go on mentally for you to be able to do that? And number two, any other hacks that you've done to kind of put a lid on it when it's time to stop eating, what can you do to kind of go, I'm going to squash it right there. Okay. First of all, I love these questions. I was the person who was like, I will do everything perfect except for my creamer. And, um, and I was really there for years and, um, and it was my husband that switched to black coffee. He's like, really? I, I love it. It's really good. And I'll tell you the way I hacked it if I don't have to look at it. See, we also taste with our eyes. So if you have a lid, you won't even notice the difference, first of all, and you get used to it. So if you say there's no way, I would just say start with half, stay there for a week, start with a quarter, stay there for a week. And what happens now, if I, like my daughter accidentally got me some co- some cream in um, coffee the other day, it actually tasted like milky. Like it didn't taste like coffee. It tastes like milky coffee. And it was not as good as the black coffee because I've trained my tongue. So, um, so I would say gradually step it down, but also having that lid on because again, we taste with our eyes and that's, that's how I did it. And it was super easy and I prefer it black. And, um, and if I'm going to quote unquote cheat, it's not going to be on cream. It's going to be on chips. (laughs) Um, everyone has their thing everybody has their thing but the other thing that you were talking about is the meal finisher so and I know you and I are on the same healthcare protocol at dinner what I do is I take that flavored fish oil and that becomes my finisher because it doesn't taste like fish I have an orange a really good orangey one one that's lemon or um the grapefruit one that becomes my finisher and because it's a fat it slows down the emptying of your stomach and it satisfies you. So that's what I do. And, um, and it works. I mean, I, I never eat at night. I'm so not a nighttime snacker anymore because I seal it and I close my eating window. 
Okay. So let's talk about that. Cause I, I would say right after people saying, I can't have, I have to have cream in my coffee. The second biggest problem is people say, I can't help it. I have to snack while I'm watching TV, like I'm mm-hmm. watching my dinner show. Yeah. I, I feel like I won't even enjoy my show, which I, this is not me, right. but I won't even enjoy my show unless I have popcorn or pretzels. I feel like I'm depriving myself if I don't have that and I'm not willing to give that up. So what are the options there? So I totally understand that because I, I love popcorn. I love chips. Like it's not even funny how happy I get with them. It's really kind of bizarre. And I get to have them. I get to have them on the weekends. And I'm also aware that they are pro-inflammatory. They cause inflammation. And you and I have had so many conversations about this. We are trying to really balance our omega-6 to omega-3 ratios. We want to have more anti-inflammatories than we have pro-inflammatories. So a, a way to do it is to swap the habit. You never get rid of something. Hacking is about swapping the habit. So in our family, unless it's a weekend... You know, everything in moderation is fine, but making it a habit during the week, we have tea at night and I probably have 20 different teas. It's a fun thing. You know, everybody gets to pick what they're in the mood for in the evening. Um, We never have anything caffeinated at night. And we even got some like special teacups that are like a clear double lined glass and you see them and they're pretty. And like, we've, we've made it like almost ritualistic where Tea time is wonderful. It's the it's the bonding. Even the making of it is wonderful. Rather than pouring a thing of inflammatory popcorn, it's it's the way the most important person that we speak to is ourselves. Is ourselves. And if we say I can't enjoy a movie without popcorn, then you're right. You're right. You won't enjoy the movie without the popcorn. But if you say, you know what? I get to do something that's wonderful for myself, for my family. I'm going to teach great habits to my children. I'm going to teach them healthy habits. I'm going to share with them a very healthy relationship with food and moderation. I think it's being really responsible. Well, I think the the best example I can think of is me with unsweetened tea. So I, when I first started drinking tea, say 10 years ago, I could not drink tea unless it was sweet tea. Like I thought unsweet tea was disgusting. Now, if I took a sip of sweet tea, that would be disgusting to me because I've just trained myself that I like unsweetened tea. So talk about what happened there. Like what was going on that made me go from, because that's a huge range, right? How did I go from, I couldn't drink a cup of a cup of tea unsweetened. Now I've gone to the point where I can't drink sweet tea because to me that tastes too sweet and I don't like it anymore. How do you train yourself to get there? Well, first of all, it, it's again, it, it's, it's how we're speaking to ourselves. So um, over time, you're going to train and get that habit of what your body, your body's going to start craving its habit. It's, it's, you know, there's survival. Our body goes into survival mode. So we have the prefrontal cortex that thinks logically. And it would say, I'm never going to eat sweet tea because that's kind of gross. I don't want that. But then our reptilian part of our brain that's kept us surviving in life from the saber-toothed tiger, he's the one who says, Chantel, he's the con man, keep doing what you're doing. Keep doing what you're doing. And you end up with this, this brain battle where you say, oh, but I really should have unsweetened tea. I really should. And then you have the reptilian brain saying, yeah, but Chantel, it's so good. He's the con man. So what happens is during the brain battle, you stop the conversation. Because when the brain battle starts going, the con man's always going to win. He will weaken you. But when, when you say, you know, I'm going to start having unsweetened tea, con man says, yeah, but you really want it. Oh, it's so good. You had a hard day. You had a long day. And you say, I'm not falling for that end of discussion. And then you distract yourself. And then you talk to yourself and you say, 
I'm going to feel so good when I get into this habit. I'm going to feel great. This is better for my body and I'm going to feel great. You stop that conversation. And that's really powerful. And, you know, one of the things I teach with the unshakable family is not only is that with, with food, but that's like with everything in life. I mean, understanding the brain and how the con man, you know, I call him the con man, the reptilian brain, how he just keeps you in what has kept you alive. You know, he's really doing, it's really doing its job. But once you realize that it's going to keep you right where you're at, it's going to keep you at that same weight. It might keep you from not fasting. It might keep you from have. it might keep you um, having sweetened coffee and breaking your fast or having sweet coffee, sweet tea. The other thing is, so for example, during this, if I were you, I don't, I don't like anything sweet because I've told myself I don't like it. And the reason why I don't like sweet drinks especially is because there's um, something that happens with your tongue. I think it's um, an enzyme called amylase. And it makes it, when you eat something carbohydrate or, or sweet, it leaves a film on your tongue. I don't like that. It tastes, it's like most things are digested in your, your digestive system, like your stomach and your intestines. Well, when it comes to carbohydrates and sweet things, it starts in your mouth and it leaves like this film and pay attention to it. I recommend that you do. And I literally feel like I need to scrub my tongue. So if I was to go on brain battle, oh, I really like for me, it'd be maybe more of a donut because I would never have a sweetened tea. I really want that donut. And then I can stop it, stop the brain battle by saying, yeah, my, my tongue will feel disgusting. No way. Um, I get to have a black coffee or pumpkin seeds or whatever. Yeah. And it's all about creating that habit every time. So now I'm creating the habit of having that coffee to finish my meal. So I like the slightest second that I'm starting to feel full after my meal at lunch. Now I'm having that coffee. I'm adding a little bit of cream. I'm not being deprived. In the morning, I'm having that black coffee, but I'm getting to enjoy my coffee with cream later on in the day. And, um, and there's a, I want to point out though, Chantel, because let's say you didn't get to that ideal weight. You weren't there. That's when you get to look at, zoom out and look at your habits. And you say, what can I substitute? And let's say you were at that last five or 10 pounds. That's maybe when you say, you know what? I'm going to make that coffee black or I'm going to make that a tea, you know, or maybe the two, like for me, the two days where I can eat whatever I want, maybe I get to make that one meal or one day. So it, again, it goes back to if the, where you are and where you want to be the stepping stones, the bridge are the habits. So if there's still a gap, put your habits under a microscope, pick one or two that you could substitute out. And then it becomes a habit. It's autopilot, save your willpower. So I want to read you a verse that I read this morning. It's in first Corinthians nine twenty seven, and it was oh. in the message Bible. I, I, <laughs> what? I was reading Corinthians this morning as well. And and this is what it says. It says, I don't know about you, but I'm running hard for the finish line. I'm giving it everything I've got. No sloppy living for me. I'm (laughs) staying alert and in top condition. I'm not going to get caught napping, telling everyone else all about it, and then missing out myself. I thought, wow. First of all, I was in the message version of the Bible, and normally I've read like the NIV version. Um, but that I, I read that and I was like, wow, that was really, really powerful. In the NIV, it says, it says, no, I strike a blow to my body and make it a slave so that after I've preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. But I just thought, wow, that is really, really good for us to kind of say, hey, what is the finish line? How do I get myself there. So any kind of tips to kind of, one of the things I see people doing is they start out so strong, right? They're, they're heading for that finish line and they're like, yes, yes, yes. Day one. Oh yeah. I'm fasting day two. And then they just kind of plummet. What kind of things can they do 
to keep their eye on the prize where they can get themselves to that finish line? Well, I think um, making it part of your habit um, because the more in alignment we are with what we want to have in life, you know, that goal, the more likely it's going to happen. So making it part of your morning routine, making it part of your vision that you maybe read every day, becoming in alignment with that. Um, Also, I'm in the habit of, of reading really great business books. And then I convert, my brain just converts that it into, into other things. So I can read a business book and maybe I, my mind is converting it into parenting or being a spouse or this particular one, it's called the big leap. And it's, again, it's a business book, kind of maybe business life, but it's, it's, it talks about how we have upper limits in life, subconscious upper limits. And they're talking, I think in this book, if I remember correctly, because I read it years ago, they're talking about how we almost have this subconscious ceiling with wealth or happiness, joy, but we also have that, this subconscious ceiling with our weight, with our weight. And it's almost like a thermostat that has been set. And unless we are super intentional about turning the thermostat down by creating a new vision, being in alignment with that goal, and then having the stepping stones, the habits to get there, we'll keep our thermostat subconsciously at a certain level. So, you know, for the people fasting, The Big Leap is absolutely fascinating, a fascinating book. And um, I highly recommend it. And I think it'll give insight of how subconsciously we have this thermostat set and we find ways subconsciously to sabotage our goals so we can stay playing and living the way our reptilian brain has kept us surviving this whole time. Hey guys, one of the things that will take your weight loss to the next level is coaching. You can either work one-on-one with me or one of our certified private coaches. If you'd like, you can schedule your free call. It's a 10 minute strategy call just to see if coaching is gonna really take you to the next level. Don't just take my word for it. Listen to this recent review, a happy coaching client sent in. Thanks so much for your help and guidance. I never could have done it without you. The other thing is listening to the audiobook. Listening to the audiobook and getting the video course that I've done, people are seeing dramatic results. If you just listen to the audiobook 30 minutes a day over and over and over again and get the video course, go to ChantelRayway.com and check out the video course. You won't be sorry you did. Yeah, that is a really good book. And I remember it, it basically, it's been a while since I've read it, but I remember it talks about that we, we, we don't believe we deserve to be happy all the time, right? So we cap our levels of joy for no reason. And so fear and self-sabotage are two common ceilings that we can break through with the right attitudes and exercises. So give us some examples really explicit examples of what someone can do with that. Let's just say, let's give an example of cream in their coffee. Let's say they were doing well and now they're like, that's it. You know, I'm going to start drinking cream in my coffee again. I was doing maybe a six hour window. Now I've creeped up to a nine hour window. I've, you know, maybe gained five or 10 pounds. So how do we use kind of some of those principles in that book Mm -hmm. and self-talk ourselves back in the right direction. So it really starts, first of all, with awareness. So if we are not aware, we take our past subconscious habits and patterns and upper limits, and we bring them into now, and then we create our future, right? So unless we're aware, we have have three, three real parts of life. Past, we have your past, the present moment, and the future. So when people are not aware subconsciously, their past is going to come into the now and change their future. But when we say life is right now, right now, we are making choices right now. And if we are hyper aware of these stories, these habits, these rackets, these upper limits... And right now, 
we get our vision and our goals of the way we want to, like our ideal weight or our ideal health goals. And we're hyper aware to become an alignment. See, I read my vision every single day. I am my vision. I live my vision. Everything gets to be in alignment with it. So I, I'm very intentional about living as if it's already happened. So if you, let's say you want to lose 20 pounds, 100 pounds, whatever it is, when you write down your vision, you say, I am. And you actually become the person and the choices and the habits that's 20 pounds less or 100 pounds less. You actually become that person now. You don't let the subconscious mind from the past, from your, some of its childhood. I mean, like I love chips for my childhood because I didn't get any. So I, I eat them. I'm like, why is this making me so happy? So, um, so anyway, they were kind of like the big treat, you know, of the, 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 the big prize. So, um, so I think it's about being intentional, super, super intentional and, and being the person that is 100 pounds less, that is 25 pounds less, 25, whatever. And saying, I am them and thinking as if you already are making those choices now. Life is now. Mm. Yeah, I remember in that book, it was talking about how there was, you know, a guy, I think his name is Roger Bannister and he broke the four minute mile. And like before that, people believed to be that it was physically impossible before he did it. And then as soon as he did it, it was like all these other people were breaking that four minute mile. Cause they were like, Oh my gosh, it can be done. Mm-hmm. And it's all a matter of who are you surrounding yourself with? Because if you've got other people around you in your family, let's say that are saying, you know, it's not good for you to be fasting for this long or something like that. Now you're, they're creating fear and self-sabotage into your life, which subconsciously, once you're starting to do well, now all of a sudden you're going, well, maybe I should have a little something for breakfast. Can you talk about that at all? Yeah, so it, it's interesting because usually it's the most uneducated people in a subject that have the strongest opinions. So like time and time again, you're going to see that. Like people who really don't know about a subject are going to be so opinionated. So, you know, I, I also look at at the, the I, I, I know that to be true. I believe that to be true. So um, I can either... I can either adopt that in or I have the choice to say, you know what? I understand they don't have the education. Maybe they didn't watch Chantel's podcast or read her books and, and that's okay. That's okay. It's not about, um, it's, it's not about, I don't have to take that in, but I will say, I think it is very important to be around people as much as you can that are in alignment with you. So my girlfriends, we exercise together. We eat organic food. We eat good food. You know, we'll get together on the weekend and have organic chips. But, um, you know, during the week, you know, we all have really good habits and, you know, similar vision. And, you know, if, if I had a girlfriend coming over during the week with a burger and fries, that'd be really like, that, that would not benefit me at all. (laughs) And I would need a lot of willpower to not eat those fries. So I purposely position my life where it becomes very easy. You know, I mean, it's, it's easier for me to grab the pumpkin seeds or the macadamia nuts than it would be a cracker or a chip. Well, that reminds me of one of my favorite quotes by Babe Ruth. He says, the loudest booze always come from the cheapest seats. Have you heard that quote? But I love it. That's Isn't that good. The loudest booze yeah. always come from the cheapest seats. Well, but you, we, they invite them, invite, you know, give them a copy of your books. I mean, your books are amazing. I mean, my husband took your advice and literally at 50, he'll be 50 in a few months. He's in the shape of his life. And you know, and it was really you, you know, cutting down the, taking your advice with cutting down that eating window. And he's like, I got it dialed in. And, you know, 
50 years old and he's got six pack abs. Yeah, he looks amazing. And the funny thing is both of you, when I first talked about fasting, you were like, I don't know. I don't think I can do that. I have to have this in the morning, right? Didn't you? And so did your husband, your husband, both. Your husband was like, no, I cannot go down to a six hour window. There's no way I could do that. And he's doing it seamlessly now. Yeah, he's, um, so, so it's interesting because, um, we did both have resistance and, um, he's the one who started and, um, and then I just saw his results and I was like, yeah, I, I get to do this. And the thing that's really nice is it actually makes our life very easy. It makes grocery shopping easy. It just, it really simplifies life in just in general, just because I, I do a lot with, um, with coaching and real estate and, um, and also the, the healthcare protocol, I get to hit the easy button. I don't want to spend my time thinking, ah, what do I need to make? How to do it? Like really I get to hit the easy button in life. And, um, you know, there's certain things that are going to require a lot of my willpower, a lot of my energy, a lot of my intention. I don't want to make it about my food. And when we travel, it's so easy. We literally bring, um, we travel with a little Ninja blender. We have meal prepped our shakes, just like I do during the week. And, um, I have uh, macadamia nuts or pumpkin seeds, and then we go out for a nice dinner. It saves money. And we, we don't come home from trips. I used to come home from trips with an extra seven to 10 pounds on. And, um, and that would actually take away from the experience of the trip. It would take away from my vacations. And that doesn't happen anymore. So my next book I'm going to write is going to be called A Meal and a Snack. And for me personally, when I'm the thinnest, I'm eating one meal and one snack. And that snack can be either a smoothie, something around, you know, two or 300 calories, something in, in that ballpark, or, you know, not that I'm counting calories, but if you had to know how much food I'm eating in that window, it's, I'm not sitting down eating two full meals. I'm eating one meal and then I'm eating more of a tasting is what I call it. It's, yeah. it's a meal and a tasting. So besides that smoothie, for you, because you you guys have that smoothie a lot during the week, right? Yeah, it's just it's so packed with nutrients. Like, yeah, during the week, it's just it's habit. I have it, and and I'll switch it up. Sometimes I'll do flax seeds. Sometimes I'll do hemp seeds. So what I do is I take the protein powder, and I'll even alternate the protein powders. But I get a really good organic one. That Living Fuel has a great one. But I have other ones that I love as well. And I'll only do half of the serving, but then I add in chia seeds, the hemp seeds, the flax seeds, the whole salad. I'll add in MCT oil, or I'll just throw macadamia nuts in it or um, cashews. And so you want to change things up. So although I'm saying I'm kind of doing the same thing, I do add variety because I, and I also add variety with organic brands as well. I think that that's just healthy in general to do. But um, there's so much freedom that comes with it, like freedom. I get so, to eat what I want on the weekends. I get to have the meal and I get to be at my ideal weight. So let's say you're going out to lunch and you're kind of going to a real fancy restaurant for lunch for a friend's birthday. And so for then you're having like a bigger lunch. How are you adjusting for dinner? If you're having kind of that bigger lunch Good rather question. than the smoothie. So I always will adjust. Um, and also kind of depending on where I am in my, in my like, f- I have a five pound window. So if I'm, you know, at the higher of my five pound window, I might have the smoothie for dinner or, um, you know, cutting out any complex carbohydrates with dinner. That just, just having my protein and my vegetable and the fat. And, um, but you know, when I'm really dialing it in, I'll give myself permission. You know, I'm going out with my girlfriends, where, wherever we're going. Like, I can eat pizza for lunch if I wanted to. And I get to compensate for it in the evening and be mindful about my eating window. Hey guys, I wanted to tell you I'm offering a free weight loss virtual Bible study. Now is the perfect time to focus on understanding true hunger and fullness and learn what the Bible has to say about it. 
All you have to do is go to ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study. After you sign up, you'll receive a six week Bible study video that you can watch on your own or you can get a small group of people and do it together. That's ChantelRayWay.com slash Bible study for your free six week Bible study course. So anything that you've done as far as fasting goes that has really improved your family relationship, like looking back on it, how has it really improved your family as a whole? Oh my gosh, I love this. Okay, so when we feel good about ourselves physically, like the way we look, and when we feel good about ourselves, like mentally, like um, like like you're feeling good because you've exercised, you know, it's so good for your brain. It's so good for your body, for your cells, like on a cellular level, you show up differently. You really show up differently. So everybody in my family exercises in the morning, unless my husband, my son works at an organic juice bar. If he's working in the morning, he'll do it in the evening. But our goal is to start our day with getting morning momentum. When you've made that investment in yourself, with your time and your energy, first thing in the morning, you're less likely to cheat because you've already made a a deposit, you know, an investment in yourself and you don't want to undo it. So um, you just get the momentum of being positive. You start your day off with completion energy you feel good. You're, you know, one of the things I talk about in the unshakable family is morning routines, building it on what you're doing subconsciously anyway. And, um, and when people show up feeling good, physically looking good, physically feeling good about themselves and confident, you show up differently for your family, for your spouse, for your kids, you show up differently for yourself. So you are a big fan of really buying clothes that make you feel good about yourself. I know that that's really important to you. Talk about how important that is, even with your weight. So I believe just in life, the more congruent my life is, the better. So I'm a successful woman. The more I look that way, the more I feel that way, the more people I'm around that are like that, the more books that I read that I get to learn from, the more people that I get to share with and level them up, the more I become that. So, you know, like I want, not only do I want to look a way, I I don't dress for other people. It's for me. How do I want to feel and, it, you know, it's even my home. Like, how do I want my home to feel? It's, it's really about being congruent. So, you know, we, 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 we've talked about this before. It's the, um, the tide that raises all ships. So when I'm feeling really good and my weight is where I want it and my business is doing really good, you know, it's like, it's, it just takes one of these air. My family's doing really good. It, everything starts raising. And there's a lot of power in that. And again, with any one of those, if somebody says, you know, gosh, you know, my business is doing great, but my family's not doing great. Look at the habits. Look at the habits. Or my, you know what? My family's doing great. My weight is perfect, but gosh, my business is not doing good. Look at the habits. You know, are you reaching out to your clients or are you spending more than you're, than you're making? Like, look at the habits. It's, it's, it all goes back to habits. And, And it's interesting because our habits, like if you look at your life, anything that is not at a 10, I invite you to look at your habits. And then let's peel it back one step further. Your habits are tied to your beliefs, your beliefs. And a lot of these beliefs are even subconscious. You know, our subconscious minds run our lives. Basically what happened ages zero to eight, run our lives with the exception of trauma. And I work with with some clients with trauma and that, 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 that gets to be part of that, but it's our subconscious operating system that we build our, we choose our habits on. And then our life is a reflection of it in all, in all areas. 
Yeah, I really believe that. I think, I don't think people really look at your subconscious as much as they need to, especially with weight loss, because I do believe we do have this subconscious idea of how much happiness we deserve. And we kind of say, okay, well, when I'm really thin, then I'm really happy. And we tend to maybe ruin ourselves for no apparent reason. It's almost like, oh my gosh, I'm doing so well. I'm doing so well. I'm doing so well. And that's where that upper limit mindset comes in, where we create kind of unnecessary issues that we don't need to, um, because we feel like, oh, I'm doing so well something might be going on there in your subconscious of why are you now sabotaging this? Exactly. So I'd love to speak into that with um, most people say they, they, they live like when I have this, I'll be happy or let me do this. Then I can have that. And then I'll be happy or then I'll be skinny. Like, so it's, but I've gone through a really great leadership program through um, Heartcore Leadership. I know we've we've talked about this. They really talk about, and I talk about this in my coaching program as well, is the be, do, have. So I get to be, and I talked about earlier, be the person who is at my ultimate weight, maybe 100 pounds less, whatever that is for you. I get to be her. Like I get to wake up and I get to be her. What does she look like? What does she dress like? Like I get to be her. And then I get to do her habits. I get to make her choices. And then I get to have that body I want. It's be, do, have. Most people have it flipped. I love that. Well, this has been amazing, Jen. Tell listeners where, you, where they can find you and where they can follow you. Great. So I'm, um, I'm on Facebook, also on Instagram, but mostly on Facebook, The Unshakable Family. And um, we don't have any employees. It's all my family, 21-year-old twins, my husband and I. We are putting together an incredible workshop. Um, I'm a certified life coach, and I teach families how it only takes one person, just one person, to be the best version of yourself, to live yourself life in overflow, and you get to lead your family in the direction that you want. So I'm doing a free online workshop September 24th, and would love to see you there. So if you follow us on Facebook, you will see um, you will see the details on how to sign up for the for the free workshop. And your website is theunshakablefamily.com, right? Jen Williamson. Oh, J-K-N. Jen Williamson.com. Jen Williamson.com. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Well, you guys stay tuned. We'll have another episode coming up in just a few. Bye-bye for now. Okay. This has been a Sempronto Media Production. 